This is Lesson 7, Pre-Calculus with a textbook using Larson. It covers Chapter 1, Section 5, Combinations of Functions. What we're going to learn today is how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide functions, find compositions of one function with another function, use combinations of functions to model and solve real-life problems. So, all right, add and subtract and multiply and divide functions. So that would be like f of x plus g of x, or f of x times g of x. Remember, um, functions are a fancy way of saying an equation, y equals. And then we're going to do compositions of functions, which is probably something new for you, like f com composition of g of x. So you're going to pick up g, you're going to put it into f. And we're going to find um, use combinations to model. Again, that's a word problem or a story problem. Okay, um, so down here they have a quick little list here that you can do if you're adding together two functions f plus g of x, x you can separate it. Same thing when you subtract them, you can separate them to being f of x minus g of x instead of f minus g of x. If you're multiplying them, you can also separate them. So f times g of x is also equal to f of x times g of x or f divided by g of x is the same thing as doing f of x divided by g of x. So you can do that, you just separate them. All right, um, I kind of feel like we should come back to this page. It was kind of fun, I liked it, I kept it. We'll come back to it though, maybe, let's see. Yeah, we'll do that second. All right, so let's do this page first, it's easier. All right, so we're gonna find combinations of arithmetic Finding arithmetic combinations of functions. All right, so letter A. We're going to do f plus g of x. So f plus g of x. Again, from the other page, we saw that you can separate it. So you're going to add together f of x, which is 2x plus 5, plus g of x, which is x squared minus 9. So starting with the highest power, x squared, then 2x, and then 5 and a negative 9, different signs subtract, so that's negative 4. And then doing the next one, oh, let's see, it's f minus g of x, f minus g of x. All right, again, you can separate them. Now, this one can be kind of tricky. I almost want to put a star on it. It's the minus part here that's a problem. You got to make sure you minus the whole second function. Make sure you subtract all of it. So you're going to need to use some, use some parentheses. So f of x was 2x plus 5 minus the quantity g of x, which is x squared minus 9. So make sure you use parentheses so you can distribute across the negative, which makes it negative x squared plus 9. So you get negative x squared. And then the next highest x is 2x. And then 5 plus 9, 14. Okay, then we got f g x, which means f times g when they're smashed together like that. So f times g of x, which again, you can separate into f of x times g of x. So f of x was 2x plus 5. g of x was x squared minus 9. So we're just going to foil those together, first and on or last. So that gives you 2x to the third and 2x times minus 9 minus 18x, 5x squared, and last of all, minus 45. So it's not quite there. I need to see the highest term was 2x to the third. Writing it in standard order is what I'm doing. And then the second highest term was 5x squared, then minus 18x, Last of all, minus the 45. So that's putting it in standard order from the highest power to the lowest power. Okay, then we have the last one they want us to do is f divided by g of f, x, which again is just f of x divided by g of x. f of x was 2x plus 5. g of f is x is x squared minus 9. So that's the answer. The only kind of thing you're supposed to add to go for the gold here. You can't divide by zero. So this function would not be true for three or negative three because that would make the denominator equal to zero. So that's true for all, for
for all real numbers, oh sorry, we should write domain, domain, all real numbers, except x equal to plus or minus 3. And again, that's from setting the denominator equal to 0. Whenever you have a denominator, you should set it equal to 0 and solve it. And it's a little 2, so it means you got two answers. It could be a positive 3 or a negative 3, because 3 squared is um, 9, and negative 3 squared is 9. All right, so that's just adding together functions. So going back a page here, um, I thought this was kind of interesting down here, Find, graphing the sum of two functions. So if you think about it here, what they're doing is they're asking you to add f plus g of x, which means you're adding together f of x plus g of x. Remember, f of x means y. So they want you to find the y of the f plus the y of the g, and that will give you the new function. Um, they said h of x is equal to f plus g of x, so that equals the new function h of x, so that gives you the new um, y value of the h. So what we're doing is just adding together the y values. So taking a look at this, the two graphs here, we got f and g, here's f and here's g. So adding them together, the y values of it. So this is the point negative 2, 1. And this up here is the point negative 2, 2. All we have to do is add together the y values. So the new point is going to be negative 2, 3 when you add together the y values. Likewise, when you add these two y values together, that's 0 and 1, which is just 1. And then we got 0 and negative 1, which is negative 1. So that makes a v. And we got 2 plus negative 1, 1. And then 1 plus 2, 3. So the whole thing just makes a v shape when you add up the y values. Same thing down here on number 10. We're going to add together the y values. This y value is 1. This y value is negative 3. So 1 plus negative 3 is negative 2. And over here you got 0 plus 2, which is 2. And last of all, negative 1 plus 2 is 1. So when you combine those two functions, you get this. That's your new h of x. This up here was my new h of x when you add together the y values. Alright, so going back to combining functions on the next page, this was a continuation of that other one we did, um, number 14 down here, where they wanted us to do all of it to it, do add them, subtract them. Alright, so we're going to do that again. So this one goes pretty quick. There's not a lot to do to it. So if we add these together, f of x plus g of x, there's nothing we can do, really do to make it any prettier at all. You just are going to have to leave it like this. We're done. If anything, we should add then a domain that... Um, this isn't going to be a problem. There's nothing in here that will make the domain 0 because it's squared. But this, um, x squared minus 4, needs to be greater than or equal to 0. So it's going to have to be greater than or... Um, plus or minus 2 on it. Um, which would give you the absolute value of x greater than or equal to 2. Um, and when you subtract them, f of x minus g of x, that gives you the square root of x squared minus 4 minus. Um, well, you know what? Going back, we don't need to make a domain. Um, yeah, we do, because it has to be greater than or equal to 2, the absolute value of it. Yeah, it does. All right, I'll focus. So f and then minus g, which is x squared over x squared plus 1. So it, it would have the same domain issue, too, because you still have that. And then we got the next one, f, of g, f times g. So when you multiply them together, you get the square root of x squared minus 4 times x squared over x squared plus 1. So that's x squared, square root of x squared minus 4 over x squared plus 1. I just made it a little prettier by putting that in front of the square root. I, honestly, I don't know if we really even needed to do that. There's really not much to do to it. 
And last of all, the division one. So f divided by g of x. So f of x divided by g of x. You put f on the top. This one's a little bit of work. You got f on the top, x squared minus 4, divided by the quantity x squared over x squared plus 1. So remember, when you're dividing, it's the same thing as multiplying. So that becomes um, the square root of x squared minus 4 times x squared plus 1 divided by x squared. So, and again, you can't really clean that up. Don't try to cancel anything else out because it's added together. I'll write it down here. So that gives you um, x squared plus 1 times the square root of x squared minus 1, no, minus 4, all over x squared. Ah, there's my white out. So exciting. So x square root of x squared minus 4. All right. Um, and on this one, you couldn't have it equal to 0 at all. Um, and then on top of that, um, the absolute value of x is going to have to be greater than or equal to 2 because of the square root there. So we've got a couple of domain issues on it. Okay, on the next one, we got f plus g of the number 1. All right, so you could combine f and g. They're up here. And then put the 1 into it. All right, if you want to, you can separate them. You could do f of 1 plus g of 1. I'd rather do that. So f of 1, f was um, x squared minus 1 plus g, which is x minus 2. So i got to put a 1 in it then. So that makes 1 squared minus 1 plus 1 minus 2. So that makes minus 1. Same thing down here. You can do f of t minus 3 plus g of t minus 3. So plugging it into the, the f, which was x squared minus 1, gives you t minus 3 squared minus 1 plus, then plug in t, t minus 3 in for g. That's going to give you t minus 3 minus 2. Then you, you need to clean it up. So foiling this out gives you t squared minus 6t plus 9 minus 1 plus the t and then minus 5. So starting with the highest power there, t squared. And then negative 6t plus 1t makes minus 5t. And then 9 minus 1 is 8. Minus 5 more leaves you 3. So t squared minus 5t plus 3. All right, and just just to explain where this came from, if you didn't follow that, t minus 3 squared, you got to FOIL it. So it's t minus 3 times t minus 3. So you're doing first, outer, inner, last. You got t squared minus 3t minus 3t and then plus 9. So that gives you that minus 6t in the middle that I had over here. All right, composition of functions. So we're going to put, pick up one function and put it into the other function. So you always put the second one into the first one. So f of g means that you're picking g up and putting it into f. So I need to pick g up, put it into the x of f. So that makes then the cube root where the x is. The x is gone. It is replaced by x cubed minus 1. I mean plus 1 and then minus that one. So it gives you the cube root of, those are gone, x cubed, which is just x. And then doing part b, they want g of f. So that's picking g up. No, no, that's picking f up and putting it into g. So I need to pick f up now. Here's f. Pick that up now and put it into g. So instead of x cubed plus 1, x becomes cube root of x minus 1 cubed plus 1. OK, it was x cubed plus 1. And instead of x, I put inside x the cube root of x minus 1, because that's what f was, and then plus the 1. The cube root and the cubed um, cancel each other out, so that's just x minus 1 plus 1, which also gives you x. Then letter C wants to know, so that was A, B, now C wants to know what is F of G is 0? Well, we did F of G already right here on A. It was the letter X. 
So that's really, you're just putting zero in to x. So that's zero. And then on the next one, so from the top, we're going to do f of g. So we're putting g into f. So the x is replaced by 1 over x to the third. So that makes 1 over x cubed because 1 to the third is still 1. And the next one, um, we want to do g of f. So we're picking f up, putting it into g. So pick f up, and it's going to go over in here for the x now. So that becomes 1 over x, and the x is replaced with x cubed. And then last of all, letter C wants to know what is f of g is 0. Well, if I put the 0 now into that function 1 over x cubed, the 1 over 0 cubed, it's undefined, so it's not possible. And the direction is said to say whether it's not possible or not, so it's not possible. So I'm following directions, and they said to say it wasn't possible. All right, it says find two functions f and g such that f of g of x equals the new function h of x. All right, so this is kind of using your parent functions to some extent a little while ago. So we have something to the third. So what we want to do here, the final, we got f of x and g of x, and we want to do f of g, so we want to put g into f. So what we're putting it into is the final function here. The final big function here, the parent of it all, is x to the third. And the piece that we're plugging it into is what's in the parentheses, which is 1 minus x. So if you picked 1 minus x up and plugged it in for x, that would give you 1 minus x to the third. So these would be your two functions for f and g. Same idea here for f and g. The parent of it here is going to be 4 over x squared. And what's in the parentheses, just like before, the parentheses is what we're plugging in, which is 5x plus 2. So you pick that up, plug it into that parentheses, and that gives you 4 over 5x plus 2. All right, I'll see you for the next lesson.